taking advantage of our open borders. The number of Chinese illegal migrants crossing the border is surging. Guys, up 115 percent since October last year. This is coming as a new report reveals Chinese nationals have breached U.S. military sites at least 100 times in recent years. Former State Department Senior Advisor Christian White Whiten joins us now. Christian, so glad to have you here with us. You know, you are the former senior advisor in the George W. Bush and Donald Trump administrations. You know, I want to ask for your thoughts about why do you think border crossings among Chinese nationals are now surging under President Biden's watch? What are these foreign nationals doing here in the country? Well, yeah, a lot of foreign nationals are crossing the border just for economic reasons. They want a better life. But if you look at China in particular, if you step back, this looks like a concerted effort to build a fifth column in the United States. Um, the issue with people probing the defenses of military bases, and this could just simply just be driving up to the gate and see if they get turned around, but there have been instances of, of people posing, or maybe they actually are Chinese tourists, who are just given a side mission and, and have people who are kept back home or are going to be interviewed as soon as they get back home by the Ministry of State Security, who are, are very aggressive, who are blowing past checkpoints, who have penetrated deeper into military bases. Um, and if you just step back and look at all of the things China does, and also its, its method of espionage, which instead of the Soviet Union and later Russia, which is to focus on a very few high-value penetration agents that can work their way into the CIA or FBI, China just sort of throws everything against the wall and sees what sticks. So this could very well be part of that effort. Christian, I've made the point on this program before that when China feels it's being backed into a corner or it's got troubles that it's dealing with, it becomes more aggressive. Right now, um, you know, article after article, including one today about the property sector in the Wall Street Journal, China's property sector, um, it seems to be that this bubble is about to burst at any moment, which would be a huge economic situation for them. It would be probably, um, you know, on the proportions of what we saw here in 2008, an economic kind of crisis that would impact us as well, you know, spill over here at home because of our trade ties to them. But having said that, when I read that and I see that, I say to myself, China's going to be more aggressive. They're going to be on the offensive because they're in trouble right now. Do you agree with that? I do agree. I think that's a very good point. It's something we've seen with other dictatorships when um, they are no longer internally focused or don't want to be internally focused. Uh, they look uh, elsewhere. They look for foreign adventures as a way to justify their continued repression and rule. And if you look at Xi Jinping in particular, his tenure, especially the more recent half decade, has been uh, politics first, basically. So putting politics ahead of this, this tacit deal that previous um, Chinese leaders had with the population where it's like, well, you're going to take our repression, but we're going to mm. give you economic balance and growth. And that seems to have gone away. And if you look at the Soviet Union, too, in particular, the stagnation that it began to um, incur in the 1970s then and while that simultaneously occurred with the Reagan-Thatcher renaissance in the West, um, it creates a moment of danger. It creates um, you know, an increased uh, incentive for acting out. Christian, I want to switch gears, talk about Vladimir Putin and Kim Jong-un. It sounds like they want to partner on weapons. Have we driven Putin into his arms a bit with our U Ukraine policy? How do you explain what's happening there? Well, with the, with the North Korean dictator Kim Jong Un, he might be taking the armored train across uh, what is it nine time zones from yeah. from <laughs> it's a pretty long train ride. This uh, has tended to be a once or twice in a lifetime pilgrimage that North Korean dictators make. Um, you know, uh, North Korea was was be, was basically a creature of the Soviet Union when it was created. It's become much more of a, a Chinese satellite. Uh, but yes, you know, Russia is willing to look anywhere to buy arms. It gets a lot from Iran. China has denied that. It's uh, providing dual use uh, or outright uh, munitions and arms to Russia, but the dual use stuff has certainly made its way there, whether that's mm. um, intentional or not, it's up to anyone's guess. Um, but you're going to see this, this broader sourcing of weapons, this, this sort of uh, almost a decoupling, a, a creation of, of a separate entity of uh, a block of Russia, of China, North Korea, Iran, and um, a number of African states who are willing to, to traffic in arms. Mm. And final point, um, President Xi will be absent from the G20 as well. When you don't want to talk about it, you just don't show up. <laughs> Christian, great to see you. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you.